सो अ वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू यू ऑल सो दिस इज द सेकेंड लेक्चर इन द सीरीज सो टूडे यू विल स्टार्ट विद द प्रोग्रामिंग एक्सरसाइज सो टूडेज टॉपिक इज अ इंट्रोडक्शन टू एनाकोंडा पाइथन सो इन टूडेज टॉपिक वी विल कवर द बेसिक्स ऑफ पाइथन विच विल बी यूजिंग फॉर द सब्सिक्वेंट लेक्चर्स so i will be covering uh, uh, following topics uh, during the course of the lecture why we, we you need to why why we have selected python and introduction to anaconda some basic syntax of python some few data structures in python then how do you uh, use how do you <coughs> implement control flows and functions then we will learn how do we read and write files using python so now this is introduction to python so why python python what is python python is an interpreted interactive object oriented programming language so python is uh, a bit different from the compiled languages it is an interpreted and it's interactive plus it supports both object oriented as well as functional programming paradigms so the python software foundation that holds the copyright on python its mission is to advance open source technology related to python and to publicize the use of python python is available in multiple many distributions like c is available in turbo c ncc so similar way there are multiple distributions of python apart available <coughs> like uh, there is a standard uh, distribution that is called cython apart from cython there is anaconda python active python like win 9x python or portable python so today we will be using anaconda python so anaconda is one of the most popular versions of python for data sciences so next why do we why we have selected python so python anyway python everybody knows python is powerful plus it is as is it is as it is quite fast python runs everywhere means python runs on every platform either you run on windows mac or linux so python is operating system independent language then friendly and easy to learn i think this is the most compelling reason for everyone to learn friendly and you can learn it is quite easily next is python is open source so python lets you work more quickly and integrates multiple systems together very easily plus python's documentation tutorials and guides are constantly evolving with a large community support so you will get a lot of tutorials and updated guides on internet very easily so with the use of python actually you can be double quite very good very uh, productive in very less num- less time available so i think friendliness and easiness to learn is the most compelling reason why do we use python so now this is the <coughs> what what is anaconda python so anaconda actually anaconda is one of the most popular python distribution as i explained in my previous slide that there are multiple uh, distributions of python so anaconda is one of the most popular distributions of python plus it is a python distribution plus it is a package manager also so later on you will see that when you are going to install some uh, package or library so actually the uh, package or library will be dependent on multiple other libraries so if you are going to install those libraries one by one it's quite difficult task to install the library so package manager helps you in installing the packages and managing those plus moreover it anaconda is an environment manager as well now suppose if you want to install multiple versions of python because some softwares may require some python 2.7 some may be working on python 3.2 or and all so suppose if you want to install multiple versions of python so that also can be done easily with a environment manager so anaconda is also an environment manager environment manager as well for managing different versions of python plus it has python distribution with 1000 plus open source packages it has a lot of open source packages available with this by default so <coughs> how do you install anaconda on windows for installing on anaconda first you need to install the downloader which is available at this link so you can install depending depending on your operating system either windows linux or mac so you can select the appropriate installer from that link and follow the instructions thereafter so for managing an account actually there are two ways so either you can if you are a, if you <coughs> like gui 
so you can use anaconda navigator or if you are a if you if your preference is command line interface then you can use conda so suppose after you uh, anyway i will not spend much time on this so suppose if you have installed if you have downloaded anaconda from the link this is the link so directly you can search on google that will also you will get so from here depending on your operating system you can select particular whichever is suitable for you that particular anaconda and you install once the anaconda is installed now for config configuring the anaconda there are two modes either you can go through the command line mode or you can go for gui mode so once everything is installed then if you go to your start button you will see a anaconda navigator so if you are if you want to go for gui based thing then you can go to anaconda navigator so when the anaconda navigator starts you will see like this interface now suppose now you can suppose you are going to start something new so you can go to environments and you can create you can see that there are multiple environments already created you can go to create there you can create a environment suppose whatever name you wants to give so test suppose i want to give it test environment test so from then the, you can select which version of python you need so you can select appropriate version of python then you can create so with that a new python environment gets created with the name test environment 1 so in that particular environment then that is created so like here you can see that there are multiple environments we have created so that now it, then it will display that environment here then suppose if you want to activate that environment you can go to that click there and it activates that environment suppose i am going to activate the geo process environment so there you can see that these are the installed libraries in this environment and suppose if you want to add a new library you can go to packages which are not installed so here you can search like if you want to see anything any library so it will show by default then you can select that particular library and click install so with that a new library get installed so this way you can use anaconda navigator if you are uh, your fewer preferences gui based management so suppose if you want to if you want to go for command line interface then there is a conda so if you type here anaconda then anaconda prompt so here you will see the anaconda prompt starts so and on the anaconda prompt there are different commands like for creating environment you can so suppose if you 
want to create an environment so you have to write So first thing you need to write, you need to run this. Suppose if you want to create a new environment, you need to write conda create, conda create, then minus minus name. Then you have to give the name to of your environment. And suppose by default, if you want to install some particular library, then that that also you can specify. So once the environment is created, you can activate the environment. So you can activate the environment by calling the activate command so suppose here i have created the geo process environment so when if i type activate so with this this particular environment gets activated so in that again you can if you want to install any other libraries and then you can type conda install that particular name of that particular library will whichever you want to install otherwise by default many libraries will come so for today's lecture anyway though no specific library is required we will be using just the base libraries which come with python anaconda python so same with now suppose if you want some specific version of the python then you can write conda create minus minus names that whatever name you want to give then which version of python you want to install so like python 3.7 2.7 3.8 whatever so this way you can create a new so suppose on you want to search some packages conda search conda install so that way you can install new libraries with your package so plus we will use one other other thing called jupyter notebook so jupyter notebook so if you see anaconda navigator so the jupyter Note notebook is a open source Jupyter Notebook is an open source web application for creating and sharing documents that contain live code, equation, visualization, and narrative text. So this is like this is like a web application in which you can write live code or you can write some equations, you can insert some figures. So this is like like uh, your notebook. So you can in your notebook, there's generally in other text edit other text editor you can just you have to just write the codes and few comments with this. But here you can write complete code plus you can insert some figures you can write some equation using latex and other things then once then the intermediate outputs in nice html formatted you can save those outputs you can share your notebook with other people and all plus it supports multiple programming languages as well like julia r python java So now, just I will show you the basic Jupyter notebook. So once you start the environment, suppose if I see here, Geo process that particular environment I am starting. So if I go to the home, so here you will see an icon like Jupyter notebook. Anyway, here it is already installed. So otherwise it will come like here install so you have to install click here on install then the jupyter notebook gets installed now suppose you start launch then it will go launch so once it launches you will see an interface like this so this is the interface for jupyter notebook now you need to click on new then python 3 then it starts a notebook so every, actually this is the interface of notebook actually notebook has basically two types of cells one is the cell which contains python or any other programming language code and another cell we like there where we write text text 
can be any uh, text could be any formatted text maybe it can be html text or some latex equation and so on so <coughs> the uh, which type of cell you want you have to select it from here either you want code or you want to write some markdown or any other formatted text by default it will come to the code and here you can change so once you this is the interface for a jupyter notebook similar way suppose if you want to write you know you say that no i don't want to use python jupyter notebook you can use command line interface so once you activated your environment then here you can type python so this is a python interactive editor so then you can start writing your code directly here so just if you see print hello python so either you can write your code interactively on the shell or you can create a text file with .py extension and there you can write your complete script and run it using python and then script's name but anyway we will be using jupyter notebook for our purpose so <coughs> this is i think i you can just so these are this actually you can explore yourself uh, multiple features are available so from here you can kernel you can restart shut down suppose if you want to create a new notebook you can create file new notebook and here then these are editing features suppose if you want to insert line numbers so then you can say that insert toggle line number and there are multiple features so if you have written a notebook then you can your notebook you can write it as convert it to html latex notebook or pdf you can convert or even dot py python script you can convert or even you can directly make your presentation presentation out of your code directly using reveal.js and so on so actually this is a client server architecture so now i will just start with the basics of python so i will say close and hold so here i have already created a notebook so i just go and open the notebook so here you can see that in my notebook i have written some text plus some live code is written so this way you can combine code figures and some a text with your program now just we will start the basics of python so what is a value so now we will start uh, writing programs once you get familiar with this so python basic what is values so value is any fundamental thing that a program manipulates like suppose values can be like hello python one true well or some true false so these are values like some name like you say that in algebra or somewhere like values so 2 3 4 3.14 so these are some values so our what what our program does our program manipulates these values and we <coughs> manipulate these values and we return and we get some result after manipulating those values so next thing is comes variable what is variable when we associate a name to a value then that we call a variable like in algebra we write x equal to 2 y equal to 3 and so on so what we are doing we are assigning that we are assigning a name to that value so that we call variable so whenever we assign a name to a value like here we have called uh, we have we have a value hello python now we assign it a name like string name string name equal to hello python so name is a variable or suppose you say that the value of pi is 3.14 so 3.14 is a value and when we give it a name like pi pi equal to 3.14 then pi is a variable so variable is one of the most basic and powerful concept in the programming language so what does a variable does variable assigns a name to a value so variables are nothing more than just they reserve a memory locations that store those values so they are the name they are the name of those memory locations where that value is got stored 
so python variables does not need express, explicit declarations to reserve memory like in c c++ or java we need to explicitly declare a, declare the type of variable but in python we need not explicitly declare the type of a variable so like here you can say that we have um, so now in jupyter notebook suppose if you want to run the cell because this is just simple cell you can just click on run run so these are just text cells formatted text cells so nothing comes here so now here what we are doing this is hello python so hello python is a value now we are giving it assigning it to a variable message so message now contains message equal to python so this hello python value is being referred by the variable message so here you should so we are assigning the value hello python to the variable message so you should not get confused with the it with the mathematical expression of equal to so this is an assignment assignment operator so message equal to hello python assigns the value hello python to the variable message so say similar way we can assign an integer also to a variable so here we have written n equal to 10 so suppose if you are doing this in java or any other programming language so then there there you need there you need to explicitly declare their type as well so maybe we string integer or something but in python we need not declare the type so here i have written message equal to hello python similar way we have created another variable called n and assigned it a value 10 and so similar way you can assign a variable to floating point value now suppose if you print so now if i give a print message so it will print the value the prints the value what this message variable contains so it prints hello python so similar way you if you print these variables n e so you can print like print message n equal to n e equal to e this way you can print now what are these are the variables now what are the modules so module is a, fi a file containing python definition and statements so module is nothing like like this is a similar file that similar python file that contains some function definitions or like there may be some other variables and so on so module is the file so what happens python has a lot of functionalities available so not every functionality does not come automatically when you start a python so whenever you start python only things which are necessarily required so those only gets loaded into the python interpreter so suppose if you want to add some new functionality you need to import those modules so extra functionality can be added by importing those modules so any object so and the module will contain functions or, or objects so those functions or objects can be accessed by using uh, module name dot that objects name so like here we can say that so how do you import a uh, another module so we have for that we need to write a statement import so import then the name of that module so import dot math with import dot math statement what happens whatever functionality written in the math module everything come to the comes to the python interpreter now you can access the objects or functions available in the python module using by calling this module name dot the function or object available in this suppose you want to call the function power so math we can call it math dot pow power then we can pass it the arguments so we'll, i will be explaining next what is the arguments similar way there may be a there is a function there is a module called random so just we need to import random and you can call the functions available in the module random there is another thing like suppose if you want if you you already know the name of the object or function available in the library or module so then even you can import it this way also from path lib import path so this also like instead of writing path dot path lib you can just you can import it this way also from path lib module import the path object so in python 
comments start with hash so any line of the code which you want to make it as a comment in your code you have to write it you have to proceed it with a hash so like here you can see that this is a comment so interpreter does nothing to this and we'll this way now let us see that how do we put all these things together and write a simple program that calculates simple interest given the rate principal amount and time available for deposit so like here we can say that we have a value of like rate rate interest rate is a value so that interest rate we are assigning to a variable so rate we can assign like rate equal to 10 then our principal amount that is another again another variable in similar way we have time now suppose you want to calculate interest so you can write interest equal to rate multiplied by principal multiplied by divide by 100 so this way this program calculates the interest for this particular rate at this for this principal amount at this particular rate of interest now suppose if you want to print this so then print interest is then so in now here interest is another variable that is that holds the result of this particular calculation so similar way you can write any sort of uh, calculations here now what are the various data types available in python so python has python can have it has numeric types so i can write integer types like 92 12 0 1 and so on or floats three real those are the real numbers 3.14 5.67 and so on even you can store complex numbers of the form a plus bi where a is the real part and b is the imaginary part or it can be boolean like true false actual true and false are the sub types of integer maybe zero is for false and one is for true and other types are and strings strings other types are strings strings can be like hello python india or it could have it can be sequence type like list a uh, list of items or tuple or ranges i will be explaining one by one these in detail next is indentation so in another under programming languages we define the blocks of code using maybe curly braces mostly using curly braces like in c or java we use curly braces to define a block of code but in python we define a block of code using indentation so all the lines which have the same indentation they belong to the same block like here you can see that this these two statements they have the same indentation from here like maybe four spaces or five spaces so this what does this means this means that these two statements belong to this block so whenever this condition gets evaluated these two statements get executed so instead of putting a curly braces here we have put indentation so indentation <coughs> indentation defines a block and the indentation within the block needs to be consistent so here suppose you have seen that this is a block of code and these are the two statements which is which are inside this block of code now these two both of the these must have the same indentation we cannot put like one print here or less one space here if we give a uh, give less one uh, one space less here then the interpreter complains that this is an identified indentation or something so the indentation within the block must be consistent so suppose if you are generally we follow the four spaces of indentation that is the standard practice so every statement inside the block must have the same level of indentation then next first line with less indentation is outside the block so the first line the interpreter encounters the first line which is which has less indentation than the existing things then it thinks that is assumes that this block is completed then this particular statement is outside this particular block so for generally for starting a new block we put a colon so after colon a new block starts and then whenever a line with less indentation comes then it assumes this as the end of the block and starting of the new statement in your program so this way 
so with using indentation we define the block of codes exactly what is the advantage of indentation advantage of indentation is that like if you are using curly braces or something then all, all different programmers may write in different style so but here but if you are using the indentation then everybody is forced to write in the similar way so the structure of the program will be more or less similar of all the programmers which are writing the same block of code now <clears throat> there is another data type that is string so what is string so string are text values like maybe hello anaconda hello python or somebody's name and so on so how do we use right strings in python so strings can be enclosed in single quote or double quote or even triple quotes so any any value that is put inside single quotes double quotes or triple quotes is a will uh, interpreter will be treating them as a string so like here we can say that this is a value spam x so this if this is inside single brackets it means it is a string so suppose there is a function called type so if you use type here it says that it is a of string so similar way either you can write in single quotes or even you can use instead of single quotes you can use double quotes or even triple quotes so this is also a string triple quote says that one is that you can write multi line string in this so if your string is spanning over multiple lines then or like you want to for if you want to make it more readable then you can write it multiple lines so then you can use triple quotes so now suppose if you want to write a string like doesn't doesn't with a single closing quote so now suppose if you write if you write here doesn't if you just make a string like this then interpreter will complain that okay it assumes that the string is ending here and nothing is going there so if you want to write a string like this then what do you have to use you have to use a escape character so escape escape sequence is slash so after what how the interpret uh, interpreter interprets it after slash whatever comes is it takes that particular character as it is so if you want to write doesn't then you have to use a double uh, uh, slash or escape sequence so doesn't so or you can use you can enclose your outer string inside a double quotes and inside you can use single quote or either you can use this way or you can use a uh, escape sequence so this way you can write this this is the escape sequence escape sequence means whatever character after comes after escape sequence that will be taken as it is so interpreter will not see it as closing space because like here if you see it if you don't use slash here then the interpreter will come complain that okay this string is invalid syntax because it say it assumes that this particular string has ended here and new string is starting here but there is no opening code for that so you either you can use this or inside a double quote is it or you can use triple quotes as i explained earlier so this is a multi line string you can use think, triple quotes this is a string like usage things option also this way you can store a multi line string then another suppose if you write like 3 star un un plus i u m so what happens here so this Three star means this U N gets concatenated three num three times. So if you run this program, this will not three U N. So actually, you are whenever a string you <coughs> use multi you use an integer multiplied by that particular, so this string gets concatenated three times. So the output will be three U N U N U N I U M. So this will be the U N. Suppose if you want, you write here two cross. and it will becomes 
you know, IUM, IUM, repeated two times and three times UN, UN. Now, suppose this is a string. So, strings can be indexed or subscripted with the first character having index 0. So, suppose if you want to extract some particular character from the string. So, anyway, strings can be indexed using numbers. So, the first character in the string will have index 0, then 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So, suppose this is a string word python. So, if you, so uh, uh, <coughs> p will have index 0, y1 and so on. Now, suppose if you print word 0, it will print 0th character. So, it will print p. And similar way, if you print word 5, it prints the last character. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and it prints n. Plus, Java has one unique thing that indices may have negative numbers also. So, in the general, generally other programming languages, they start from 0 and go to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 to n, n minus 1. Python has a, can have negative indices also. So, negative indices mean the rightmost character will have minus 1. So, if you print word minus 1, it will print last character. So, minus 1, this will be So, n, n means minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus so on. So, from left to right, you can go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and right to left you want to go minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So, suppose word minus 1, if you do that prints the last character. So, it will print minus 1, minus n, sorry. Then if you print word minus 2, it comes to the second last character. So, similar way we can keep on coming back. So, in addition to indexing, there is a concept called slicing also. Python string support slicing also. So, while indexing is used to obtain an individual character. Now, instead of obtaining an individual character, you want to get a set of characters or slices. You want to get the, suppose if you want to extract the characters from in the uh, index 0 to 5 and so on. So, for that we can use slicing. So, for the slicing we need to use a colon in between. So, word 0 colon 2, it, it will extract the characters starting at the index 0 to 2 on excluding 2. So, a character 0 character and first character. So, this will see the slicing. So, it will give you P and Y. Suppose instead of this 0, if you change 3, then it will extract three starting 3 characters. So, P, Y and T. So, similar way you can so, first is the starting index, next is the ending index. Ending index minus 1. Actually, this last index is generally is excluded. So, word 2 to 5, it gives THO. So, 0, 1, 2, T, H and O. So, that way you can slice a string. There is another way to put like either for, suppose if you have a multi-line string or for uh, readability you want to break your string into multiple lines, then Either you can use triple quotes or you can write use like if you want to fragment your statement in multiple lines using you can use plus and slash. Slash if you use this slash then it is a continuation line. So, even line has not ended but the line is continuing. Other programming languages we use a, call, a semicolon or something for line terminator but here there is no line terminator. So, either you can use plus and slash. Slash means the continuation of line. So, line end. So, this way you can write the line in, fragment your line into multiple lines for writing. Now, we will discuss some few other data structures. So, list. Now, suppose if you want to, till now the variables were holding a single value. Now, suppose if you want to store multiple things in a variable, like suppose you want to store the names of all students in a class or uh, marks scored by all students in the class and so on. So, a single variable will not suffice for that. A single variable can hold on a, uh, the variables which we discussed till now can hold a single value. So, now there is a other data structure called list which holds multiple values. So, list is a ordered sequence of information accessible by index. So, when you store multiple, multiple, when you store multiple val values in a variable and those variables you can access using index like string like similar way string so string is a single value but now suppose if you want to store multiple values so then and 
access them using a index so then for that we can use index list so a list is so generally your list is denoted by square brackets so whenever you put square brackets means that item is a that variable is a list so generally a list contains only homogeneous elements so all elements this is a practice this is not mandatory but in generally what practice we follow that all the elements of a list must be of homogeneous type like if you are creating a list all the elements but this is not necessary all the elements that the, the practice we follow all elements could can must be of integer type float or all must be string but that is just a convention word we use so anyway list elements can be changed as you know string actually strings there are two things like mutable and immutable so the objects which are mutable so their contents can be changed but the objects which are immutable their contents cannot be changed like a string string is a is an immutable object so once a string is created now you cannot change the contents of that particular string so if you want to change the content of string a new string object gets created not the same but list lists lists are mutable you can change the content of list at any time let us see how do we create a list suppose you are creating a list square so suppose you want to store the squares of all the natural numbers from 1 to 5 so how do we create as of now we are creating a variable name square squares and how do we create a list using as i said brackets so whenever you starting a bracket means we are creating a list so this square variable will contain multiple values so these will be the values separated by comma first value comma second value third value and so on so this is a list squares list now if i print the squares list now squares variable has multiple values stored in it now if you want to like we have stored the marks scored by a number now we will we will we need to access those individual elements so like in the string we were accessing so similar way we can access individual elements from the list using the index so first value in the list will we have index 0 1 2 3 and so on similar with minus 1 for right, starting from the right minus 1 minus 2 and so on so suppose if i give squares 0 it will print zero element square minus 1 it prints the last element from the list similar the way we were indexing a uh, slicing the string similar way we can slice the list squares minus 3 minus 3 to last so minus 3 like minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 so these three elements will be printed if i print it here so you can see that 9 6 15 so this is minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 so now suppose if you want to uh, <coughs> add new items to the list so either you can use just plus plus operator you can use squares plus another list if you add it a new list gets created with the elements from the both of the list squares was already having these elements 1 4 9 5 16 15 15 15 and few more elements got got added and a new list here we are not modifying the existing list a new list is getting created so this way you can concatenate two string concatenate two lists together and so on now as we say as i said that uh, contents of uh, list is a mutable object so we can change the contents of a list like suppose here we have say we say that we have created a list with name we have created a variable or variable cube a variable cubes that is type of list this is contains these values 1 8 27 65 12 and so on Unlike as I said, strings are immutable. Lists are mutable. So now, suppose if you want to change the fourth element from 65 to 64, so how do we change it? We we write cubes, then index of which and the new value. So cubes three equal to 64. If we write the value 64, 65 gets replaced with the new value 64. Now if I print cubes list, now it prints. Earlier it was print. It was having elements one eight twenty seven sixty five hundred. Now it has elements one eight twenty seven. So sixty five got replaced with sixty four. So like we can extract similar similar way assignment to slices also is possible. So till now we were just extracting the values using slicing. 
Now even similar way we can assign values also to the slices. So here suppose here you see that we have a <coughs> this name letters. Letters contains A B C letters A B C D E F G. Now suppose if I write letters two com two colon five equal to C D E. So what it does, it extracts elements. Second, third, and fourth, and assigns them the values C, D, and E. So this way you can assign, change multiple values together with a single statement. So if you see now, letters list has become A, B, C, A, B, capital C, capital D, capital E, and F, G. So this way uh, you can assign <coughs> like uh, assignment to the slices also is possible. So suppose if you want to empty a list. so you can write letters colon so actually when just there is a just colon it means full list full list so it will empty the list so now it will assign the all you know this will this will empty the full list so now you see letters there nothing no element left in it so there are like similar way there are multiple functions available with the object uh, list so that you can explore with the documentation like you can add remove pop push and other things so next data structure is tuple tuple also is very similar to the list tuple also consists a number of values separated by commas so there also you are separating multiple values using commas but cannot change element values as as i explained that list we can lists are mutable we can change the contents of list but the contents of tuple are we cannot change so lists were enclosed in square brackets but tuples are squared in parentheses generally tuples are used to return more than one value from a function what is the, now why they have created two things like list and tuple you know tuples generally you will use where you have you have a data now you don't want to change that data like just you want to have only read only access so you, for that you, you you can use tuple so tuple will be will give you better performance so it's like your data is such that you just want to read you will never write on it you have multiple items suppose, suppose name of students now you suppose you don't you are you are not going to update the name of students any time in your program so the tuple will be the better option for using for storing the names of students but if your data if you are going to update your name of students then you can use list so whenever your data you want you, you read your data and that you are not going to modify the contents of your data and you have a multiple values and so so tuple is a better choice there but when you want write access also to this then you must use tuple so this is the basic difference between tuple and list so generally tuple you can use for suppose a uh, function can return only single value so suppose you want to return multiple values then you can return a tuple from a function so like but tuples are immutable so and then it will be faster compared to uh, list so whenever so you have data that you want just read only access then you can use tuple so tuple how do you use tuple so tuple you can assign like 1 2 3 4 5 a comma b comma c or you can write them inside parentheses so as i said that tuples can contain heterogeneous elements but list generally we store homogeneous elements so here you can see that first element is integer second element and third is a string so whenever you store uh, in tuple you can, even in list you can store heterogeneous but the general convention is this so similar way we were access, uh, indexing the elements in list similar way you can access index the elements of the tuple using index so t0 will return you the zeroth element 1 2 3 4 5 and you can nest tuples suppose you want to suppose you want to create two level of tuple two level so then you can a comma b so if you see this u will be a nested tuple it is first its first element again is a tuple and second element is also tuple so so we can nest tuples so this tuple contains multiple tuples generally tuples was giving in this example this tuple was containing multiple elements different numbers or this 
Now this tuple contains inside a tuple we are making another tuple. So this way we can nest the tuples. But if like if you want if you try to assign a new value to any element of the tuple, the list will give an error because as I explained, tuples are immutable. Once you created a tuple, you cannot modify the contents of tuple. Similarly, suppose you are tuple has multiple elements and three elements and you want to assign it to different variables. You can just write a comma b. Suppose you have tuple has three elements a, b, c. So you can assign these to three different variables in a single statement. Other programming language you will write x equal to t0, y equal to t1, z is equal to t3. So in Python you can just write x comma y comma z equal to t. So this will unpack the t and assign every element to the different variable. So this way in the single you can write your program very compactly. So this way you can unpack a tuple. The next data structure is set. So set anyway set is very similar to the mathematical set. So set is an unordered collection with no duplicate elements. So even if you if we create a set with elements, so all the duplicate elements will automatically be removed while creating the set. Then set object also supports the mathematical set operations like union, intersection, difference, or symmetric difference. So suppose here I am so how do we create set? Set we can create using square means uh, curly braces. So a set and all elements similar ways will be separated using commas. So here we can see that we are creating a, uh, a set basket apple, orange, apple. So here you can see that apples are two times. Apple is two times. But when the set will be created, the duplicates will automatically will be removed. So when we print basket, you see that only one apple has come. Second apple got removed automatically. So whenever in your data, suppose if you want to remove duplicates, then you can use sets. Instead of this, had I used a list, it could have returned me all the elements. This. Now you can see that apple has come twice, but as I used set, it removed a duplicate element. Then suppose if you want to test the membership, like some element exists or doesn't exist in your set, or actually the same thing is applicable to all other previous data structures also. Tuple or list also you can check using in operator. So if you want to check orange in basket, so it will return true. You want to check true. Suppose you are on crab grass, you want to check whether some particular element exists in particular set or not, then crab grass in basket it says false. Now suppose we created a set these two. Now the mathematics is it supports other mathematical operation also A minus B. So A minus B will return elements which are in A but not available in B. So that operation if you want to do you can just you can create two sets and apply A minus B, A plus B, A intersection B and so on. A plus B will give elements which are common in both A and B. Set and set of plus it is not supporting. So A minus B other symmetric question and so on. So here you can see that it gives only elements in A which are not available in B. So B, D and R are not available in B. So this way it returns this. So next data structure, this is also one of the most powerful data structures that is dictionary. Dictionary is a set of key value pairs. So dictionaries are indexed by keys which can be any immutable type. So dictionaries, till now we were indexing list, tuple or set using integer indexes. Suppose you have stored <coughs> now dictionary is a key value pair. Dictionary is also a variable which contains multiple values. But till now, till now whatever data structure we studied, we were extracting every element using the integer index. So but now we will with dictionary we can extract the elements using string or any other type of using some key index. So this like suppose if I take a motivating example for suppose we have suppose we are going to store store the names of students and their marks scored by those students. So now we have two choices. We can store either those in two lists like name of students we can say name 
of student ten twenty thirty. So now you can see that now we have stored a name of student in a list and marks scored by similar A A has scored ten, B has scored twenty, C has scored thirty. Now suppose if you want to suppose this is, list is very big now this has very uh, this is very few elements we want to get the marks scored by student B. So what what how do we do how do we get the marks scored by student B? So first we need to either we need to remember that student b's marks are at index 1 or what we have to do we have to search student b in this name of students list and get its index and same same from the marks value and from the marks from that index we need to get the marks so this way this so this is inconvenient so instead of this what we can do we can use dictionary so here you can say that marks of students so there we can store key and value so key here how do we do with uh, curly braces so first will be the key so name of the student can be our, will be our key and marks will be the value comma b 20 comma c 30 so instead of storing two different list we have stored the marks of student in a dictionary so dictionary key value key value key value so now if you want to get the marks of student mar marks scored by student what we can do our dictionary and the key so now we need not remember the integer index in this indexes just by string or some other, any other hashable type we can extract the value for that particular key so this is the dictionary so similar way like here we can see that we have stored the telephone numbers of different people so a is key value a telephone number jack's phone number is this safe's phone number is alpha beta these are the so if we print this it this is a dictionary key value pairs So, if you want to extract the telephone number of Jack, you can write telephone and key Jack. Telephone in square braces Jack. So it will extract the value associated with the key Jack. So it is four zero nine eight. Suppose if you want to add a new entry to the dictionary, you can just write telephone new key value and new key and new value. Key equal to value. Then it now if you see telephone, a new element got added. to the dictionary similar way we want if you want to delete something from this delete save entry if you want to delete now if you print this telephone you can see that save got deleted from here anyway similar way membership if you want to check whether the king step phone number exists in your dictionary or not you can check like king in telephone this is similar to previous in operator so it says king is available true or suppose if you say save that is deleted it will say false next is control flow so how do we write if else is so control flow is the concept of changing the order of execution so suppose if in your code you want to uh, you want evaluate to true otherwise it should not be executed so that is control flow so that can be achieved using if else statements like similar to these control flow like if you want to <coughs> buy something or depending on the price okay if price is in this range i will buy this if price is in this range i will buy this or suppose the uh, traffic signal is red you must stop if the signal is green you must go so similar way when you make decision based on some condition so like so that is the control flow Suppose here we have a variable called traffic light. So how do we write if else statements? So traffic light we have assigned it the value green. So now how do we write if? So if traffic light then the condition we have to write if traffic light evaluates to true. 
So there is a difference between this single equal to and double equal to. So single equal to is assignment operation. So we are here we are assigning green value to the variable green light. And with double equal we are comparing two values. So actually we should not confuse with the mathematical equal. So traffic light equal to equal to green we are comparing whether if the traffic light is equal to equal to green. So now with this anyways we can see that these two lines have the same indentation. So generally indentation what we follow after the colon four spaces is the standard convention. So for every any block four spaces. So, so suppose inside this also if you want to write another block suppose here you write something some else or something then you will give then you will give four spaces here so that will be the next block so this is the general convention of four spaces so here you can see that if traffic light is equal to is equal to green then these two statements will get printed else it will print the if if the traffic light doesn't hold the value green then this statement will be executed here you can see that now the traffic light has the value green so light is green and go ahead message gets printed now so instead of uh, two you have multiple conditions to check so that also you can write this way suppose traffic light you have a value assigned the value red so you can write if traffic light is equal to is equal to green you can print light is green else if light is not green so then light if light is not green it can be other right it can it could be red or yellow so then you can write so multiple if else you can combine like this if then el if l if traffic if traffic light is equal to is equal to yellow print this then again L if then print then else. So you can write this way multiple if else. So the program will execute like this. First it will check if the light is equal to is equal to green. If the condition evaluates to true, it will print this statement. If this condition evaluates to false, then it will come to L if this con particular condition. Then it will check again if the light is yellow, then it will go to this statement. If this evaluates to true, this will print. Otherwise it will check less. Second one come to that if none of them matches then it will go to the unknown so suppose if you see here it prints light is red now if I change it to yellow it says light is yellow now if if I change it to something like this so none of the condition evaluates to do and it comes to this last else and it prints unknown traffic light now while loop Next is the while loop. While loop, a while statement executes. Suppose if a block of code you want to get it executed repeatedly and until some condition is true, uh, till the some condition is true. So suppose if you want to repeat uh, some some particular block of code repeatedly until that condition uh, till the condition is true. So once the condition evaluates to false, then it you want it to break out of that those those uh, out of that block. Then we can use while loop so while loops executes the block of course as long that that particular condition is true and this continues until the condition becomes false so until the condition as, as, as soon as it becomes false then it will come out of that block so like here we can see that I have we have a variable n equal to 0 so how do we write while loop while then the condition while n is less than 10 it will keep on printing the value of n is this and it will keep on incrementing n by 1 so you can see that from 0 to it will go up to 9 so whenever it becomes n becomes 10 so this condition evaluates to true and it comes out of the loop so there might be some cases that where the condition evaluates true always so that will be an infinite loop so your program will be looping over those block indefinitely so then either you need to break out or somehow that condition you have to make it false Otherwise, if the condition is always true, that is an infinite loop. Similar to while loop, there is a for statement. Thus, the, but this for state, but for statement is Python is slightly different from the for statements in Java or C other programming languages. What happens in Python's for statement? The for statement iterates over the items of over all items of any list or any sequence. Like sequence may be a dictionary tuple or a list so what for python's for statement does it iterates over the every element of a sequence so like here you can say that we have a sequence with name word words we have a list it contains variables cat window and this different state so if if i write for w in words 
so if this, what it will do it will iterate over every element of this list so it will go one by one so here what we are doing for w in words print w and length of w so first it will go to iterate first it will go to the cat then it will print cat and length of cat 3 then it will go to the next element next element and so on so this is the for loop so suppose if you want to like uh, you want to generate you want to generate a number of like uh, range or like uh, you want to generate a sequence of numbers uh, with for for loop like in other programming languages for that you need to use the function range so instead of writing this way, you can write for i in range 5 for i in range 5 so this generates a number 0 1 2 3 4 so for uh, range 0 to 5 so 0 1 2 3 4 now suppose if you want to generate the numbers in range 5 to 10 so you can so range operator takes multiple arguments like your print so if you pass a single element single parameter to the range function it takes it as ends end number so it will start from 0 and go to that number suppose if you pass two way two parameters to the range function it will take first as start second as end it will keep on incrementing the start one by one. So like here you say start and stop. So it starts from 5 and goes up to 10. Suppose if you want instead of 1 you want to increment it by some other number. So you can pass the third argument. So start, stop and increment. So now the uh, value of i will increment by 2. So you can see 5, 7, 9. So now there are other two statements break and continuous. So break suppose if you want to come out of your for loop or break statement breaks out of innermost in closing for or a while loop so suppose if you want that some particular condition has met then you want to break out of your innermost for or you want to come out of your innermost for in a, you are come out of your low loop so then you can use break statement and continuous statement will be suppose if you want to bypass the remaining of the code so suppose if you have four for that is the explanation continuous statement continues the next iteration of loop skipping remaining statement so suppose somewhere you have put continue in your code so if some particular condition meets so the your code will continue to the next iteration skipping those uh, statements following the uh, continuous statement like here you can see that here we are creating for i in range 5 if i is equal to is equal to 4 break otherwise print i so whenever i becomes 4 it will come out of the loop so generally it should print from 0 to 4 but it is printing 0 to 3 only because whatever whenever i has become whenever i became 4 it broke the loop similar way suppose this is for i is equal to range if i is equal to is equal to 2 continue what it will do here whenever i initially i will be 0 so it will print i 1 2 whenever i becomes 2 I equal to 2 then it will skip this print statement and continue to the next iteration so 2 will be skipped this way break and continue you can use next is how do we write and call or invoke a function as I showed in my previous slide like we were calculating interest so suppose if you have to in calculate the interest for 1000 people so one way is you can write 1000 you can write 1000 times that the statement interest is equal to this 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 or what we can do we can write a simple function uh, we can write a simple function calculate interest and call that function with arguments so with this way this is the use of function so with the function you find that some <coughs> it is if you found that same bit of code is used over and over like there you can see that interest is being calculated using the same formula every time so instead of writing it thousand times you can write a function at one time and call it repeatedly using different parameters so that is the function with the function we write our we make our programs more modular manageable so how do we write a function using python so python for writing a function first we need to write def keyword so def then we have to give the function a name so def name of the function and the list of parameters we are passing to the function function and then the body of the function so inside the body there can be there can be any statements generally a convention is a 
function should be should start with a doc string so that will be there we write the description of the function that this cal checks whether the function is odd or even so that is the doc string so this way you can write def name of the function and the list of parameters passed to the function and inside that the body of the function so that we have to write the statements like here we are writing if like we have written the function for checking whether the uh, argument passed to the function is odd or even so if i modulus 2 is equal to is equal to 0 print i is even otherwise odd so now how this is this we have defined a function but if just defining a function function doesn't do anything so we need to call the function so we want this code to be in execution so we need to call the function so how do we call a function calling function with function name then parenthesis so inside parenthesis we need to pass the list of arguments to the function so like here we are passing argument 10 so check odd even 10 it checks whether the number given is odd or even see it said 10 is even number so we can check 10 is odd number in python there is a something called default value value argument so in this this our this particular function was taking a single argument now suppose if you want to take you want to pass multiple values also to the argument to the to we want to pass multiple values to our function so we need to separate them with commas and suppose if you want that some values of the argument should take default values suppose we are writing a function to calculate the interest suppose if we know that by default the rate of interest is 5% and generally people store it with for 5 years so we want that these values to take default values so while defining the function we can assign them default values so what we are doing here def calculate interest and rate and duration we are assigning them default values of 5 so whenever you call a function with using just a single argument so rate and duration by default they will take the value of 5 so if i call this it says principal amount though we have passed just a single value 10 and by default it has taken rate and duration as 5 and depending on that it has calculated the interest now suppose if you want to override the value of rate now you you know that in the you know that in the future the uh, interest rate or duration has changed so that way you can override the value so you can call calculate interest then principal amount now rate has changed to 5 to 10 if you do this way now the value of rate will be overridden by the overridden by the 10 now rate has become 10 similar way suppose if you want to overwrite the value of duration also that also can be done by passing this value so now how do we uh, read or write a text file so uh, actually both files can be written in text in text mode or binary mode so how do we do that we write f equal to open the file name and we are we want to by default it is a read only read only mode otherwise you can pass other arguments also so f equal to open name of the file and suppose if you want to just open it in read only then r or suppose if you want to open it for writing you can pass w then once the file is open then you can read all the contents of the file using now with this f object gets created we check if we we'll create a file with name before that i will just change to the directory so i am importing a module now i just want to change my working directory so os is the my module os.csdir we write With there, I will make a file with work file dot txt. So 
Let this I write some contents. So here I am just changing my working directory or I can give full path also. So F equal to open. So with open will open the file for reading. And now suppose the file object is created. Then with F, this with this F file object gets created with the open statement. Now if you want, I want to read the contents of the file, then I have to call F dot read. So F dot read function will read the entire contents of the file. But this may not be memory efficient because if your file is too long, very big, so then it will read all the contents of the file and your memory will get filled. So a better approach is you can read a memory efficient approach is reading line by line. So if you read this, then finally once your contents are read, then you have to close the file for freeing the system resources. So how do you do that? You call f dot close. So with this you can see that when I have created a file and written there, hello Python and welcome. So those two lines we wrote uh, read here. So here as I explained that this reads the entire contents of the file. So there is a other mem more memory efficient approach where suppose your uh, RAM is limited, you don't have sufficient RAM to read all the contents of line in a single go. So instead of that, what you can do, just first open a file for reading, then you can iterate line by line, read line by line. So for that, you can use the for, for loop. So for line in F, so for every line in the object F, you are just printing that line and then finally close. So this, this is the same way but the difference is here we were reading all the contents in a single go here we are reading line by line. So actually there is one other way to open a file that is a with construct. So when you open a file with with construct the file gets automatically closed. So you need not explicitly close the call the f dot close function. So whenever we are calling the opening the file with a with construct, whenever the interpret uh, function goes out of the scope of this, the file gets automatically closed. You need not explicitly call f dot close. But if you are calling f dot close anyway, you need not worry about this. So, but this is the better approach. Even if you forget to call f dot close, the automatically file gets automatically closed, and your system resources gets freed. So this way, you can write with then open function call, file name, passes argument. So instead of just writing f equal to, we are at with open as f. So then, then the v returns with the file object. Then the similar operation, whatever we were doing here can be done on the this f object. And after this, file gets automatically closed. Now similar way, now how do we write the contents to the file? Suppose if you are writing, you want to write this value equal to the answer is 42. Similar way, we have to open the file first with open name of the file and instead of the now the second argument is the mode. So whether you want to open it for reading or writing. So here instead of reading, we are opening it for writing. So w as f, then suppose then f dot there we are calling f dot read. Now here you have to call f dot write. So with the f dot write, we can write the contents or the value of the <coughs> this or string to the file. So if you see here, oh, there will be work file 2.txt must have been created here and in that the answer is 42 is written here. So this way we can read and write the file. So this is the summary of the file. So we learned how do we define variables, what are the values, variables, how do we define variables, how do we assign values to the variables, then different data types. Then <coughs> different data structures like list, tuple, uh, dictionaries and so on. Then writing functions, introduction to, uh, then how do we write <coughs> control, how do we write control flows, then reading and writing to the files. So this is the basic introduction to the Python. So I think with this you will all be able to, able to write this. So suppose uh, the, today I, uh, <coughs> install this on in my local system. Suppose if you don't want to install anything on your computer and you have a permanent internet connection, so you don't want to install Anaconda on your system, so instead of that, you can use Google Colab. 
so google collab also google collab is also a better as a good alternative for this so you don't want to install anything on your system so google collab you will get everything pre installed so just you can search google collab so google collab is a jupyter implementation of python so in the google collab also you can write all your python you can create all the notebooks in google collab but for that you need to have a google account so this is the google collab so here you can create a new notebook so similar way this is this has the sim similar interface but it is it looks uh, quite a little bit more interactive than our notebook but anyway we will be using so if you don't want to you can you can use google collab also this is a similar interface two types of cells code or text so there in code cell you can write code or in the text cell you can write your you can insert your images and so on so either you can use go when you for google go for google collab so that's all for today thank you very much